There's nothing like a customer wrapped rolls penny hunt. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and that's right, we are gonna be doing a customer wrapped full box of pennies. Now, I'll tell you before I get started opening this up that the package came with two penny boxes for a trade from Jim Cantor and so thank you, Jim. But the bank wrapped rolls were totally damaged. We had about four or five rolls completely destroyed and loose pennies in the box. And then this one was also broken and we had several pennies spilled out of customer wrapped flat wrappers but I stuffed the flat wrappers back with 50 cents each and just put them back in the box and taped it. So I didn't look at them, I just put them in until I filled up the flat wrapper where the crease was and put them back in. I don't know if we're missing any rolls yet because I didn't count all the rolls, just took the loose flat wrappers, filled them up, stuck them in there. But Jim wrote me a nice note and I have not removed it from the top of the box yet. It says, these are mom and pop customer wrap Rolls. I think the newest pennies I saw in my box was 2012. Very few shield cents. I went through my box a second time and found some red or uncirculated memorial cents, 59 to 71, that were red blazers. So great luck and enjoy the hunt and hope you get something good, Jim. Jim, I'm super excited to do this hunt. I was going to do this one separate from the bank wrapped ones. And uh, anyway, kind of excited to get into them. With that being said, I guess we'll go ahead and get this open. We'll take his note off first. And uh, that's his tape, so let's go ahead and pop this open and see what we got in here. See if we still have 50 rolls since a lot of them were damaged. Let me just do a quick count on these and bring it back in. So unfortunately I went ahead and organized the rolls and we are missing five out of this box. I went ahead and checked the other box and we're missing three. So somehow eight rolls got out of the boxes in transit and the box is pretty heavily damaged and I can see where they probably slid out. So word to the wise, if you're shipping with USPS or any of those services, you should always completely wrap up and tape any boxes you send so that it, anything happens to the priority box, at least the contents inside stay sealed. Either way, we'll have a 45 roll hunt on this box and 45, 46 rolls on the bank wrapped ones, which I will save for another hunt unless this hunt proves fruitless. Now I'm not expecting a lot of oldies and wheat scents in customer wraps, probably not even in the Indian heads. What I am looking for is kind of what Jim pointed out in his note. We're gonna be checking for mostly red, uncirculated, beautiful scents, as well as any possible varieties that may not have been found. I would imagine if they saw wheat scents and Indian head scents when they were rolling them, they probably would have kept them. Boy, was I wrong. But we'll go through these anyway, see what kind of copper amount we have, see what kind of uncirculated scents we have, and see if we get any varieties. Bummer that it's 45 rolls, but what are you gonna do? I still wanna thank Jim, it's not his fault that this was mishandled. Trade's still a good trade for me and I'm happy to go through these scents regardless. All right, I'll bring you guys in if and when we find something we're talking about. So we're on roll one of the box technically, but I laid the box down this way so I can get all the rolls to stay where they're at since they're customer wrapped. We're on roll six, but roll one of the hunt since the first five were missing. Just thought I'd bring in and show you before I even look at them that yeah, this is definitely gonna be a copper dump. So it's gonna predominantly be copper scents and I will go through each and every one of them to see if we have anything that is a variety. Now this will probably take me longer than a normal hunt because I will be scrutinizing all of the variety dates as well as a few other dates that I always look for in my hunts. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. I'm super excited. If we start finding a lot of my favorite years to look for, maybe I will crack some with an overhead tripod look so that you guys can see what I'm looking at. But that's a lot of copper. We're still on roll one. And like I said, it's gonna take some time, but can you believe it? Look at this wheat scent, 1956D. Holy cow, it is a blazer. I bet you that came straight from an uncirculated roll and into a copper roll or maybe he found it in circulation a long time ago and rolled it up. I'm not gonna touch it too much more. That, my friend, is a good sign and an early beautiful find. And right behind it, 
is a Blazer of a 68S as well. Wow. We'll put that up here because that's not going in any rolls. Roll number eight of the box. It is roll three, but I'm going to refer to all the rolls from now on plus five so that it's roll number eight. Anyway, we did find a 1950-something. I don't know if I'm going to get a date on that. 51S. 1951S weed scent in the box. Same roll, and we have another weed scent. This one is a 1953 Denver, and just a few coins ago, I didn't film it, but we found a really nice 1969S. Not the DDO, of course, but I'm putting that up there as another shiny. Same roll, and the final few coins of the roll is a 1982 Canadian scent and a blazing 1979D. I usually don't keep the 79s, 80s, or 81s, but I will pull out the first ones that I see and see if they're ones I feel like rolling up. Roll number nine of the box, and look at this. Another beautiful weed scent, 1958. Let's just check for any reason it could be a DDO. It is a very rare one. It is not the DDO, but we had to look when they looked this nice and may not have been looked at properly in a long time. Roll 10, Canadian scent number two, it's a 1972. Same roll and a wheat scent towards the back. 1952S. Couple of early 50s with S mint marks on them. And already two 69Ss plus an uncirculated 69S. Could this be the box that gives us a lot of S minted Wheaties? Roll number 11, and we have another Canadian, and I think what I'm gonna do is not film all of the Canadians for you guys, but we'll give you a periodic update on them. That's number three. Same roll, and take a look at this one. 1924 S, I believe. It is. Man, had that been a 24 D, that would have been a semi-key date, but a 24S is, uh, I think, under 12 million minted. So that's a nice find as well. We are super excited about this box. Jim, you may have gave me a gem of a box. Roll 12, we sent number seven already. And this one, I think that's a S minted 44. And it is. Holy cow, we've got several S minted wheat scents already in the hunt, and an early one, and some shinies. Roll 13, wheat scent number eight already. 53D. We're on roll 16 of this amazingly fun to hunt copper box. We've got five Canadians, four 59s, six beauties, already eight 69 S's, and eight wheat scents. But we just uncovered another wheat scent to make it nine. And that's a 58D. We will have to slide these beauties up so that we don't touch them with other ones. This is a crazy fun box. There's a ton of 92Ds in here and a ton of 69Ss and so far a good amount of wheat scents. But we don't have any amazing finds. So fingers crossed. It stays like this at least, maybe even gets better. Roll 17 and I see a wheat scent right here. And that's a 52D. And I thought I saw another one, yes I did, right here. And that's a 34P. Common, but always great seeing one in the 30s. That is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11 wheat scents already. And since I have you here, let's just do a quick look. Oh my goodness gracious. Another beautiful 56D. A beautiful 54S. That's a 60. I don't even want to slide them. I'll tell you what, I'll go through it properly and bring it back but that's gonna be 13 wheat cents already in 
17 rolls minus the five we were missing, 12. Wish I wasn't missing those five. Well, while I was sliding them down, I missed one because the second coin in is another wheat set, number 14. 57 Denver. Roll 18. Wheat scent number 15. Holy cow, is that a 29D? No, 29S. Another less than common, but fairly common 20s wheat scent, but with another S mint mark. Unbelievable. Two in the 20s already. Can't get mad at that. And 15 for the box. Roll 19. Another blazer. Holy cow. Probably another 56D. Nope. Another 58P. So we've got two each of those. And I just want to double check it for any doubling since it's such a nice example. And I don't see any. Beautiful. Same roll. Another blazer. 1956P. Holy cow. Still the same roll. Wheat scent number 18. 1945. Let me just look at that five a little bit. Yeah. 1945 Philadelphia. Roll 20. A beautiful 1958 Denver. Wheat scent number 19 and we're running out of room for the beautiful ones. Roll 21 is going to yield our 20th wheat scent already, a 1955 Denver. And just to kind of give you an idea what I'm seeing in these rolls, we've got a Canadian right here. 1963, so it's a nice young head. And then take a look at this. Another nice memorial scent, 1960D, large date. Unbelievable. You guys might be tired of hearing from me, but it's just so much to film. Roll 23, we have a wheat scent here and a wheat scent there. The first one, a 1939 Philadelphia. The second one, a 1941 Philadelphia. We are running out of room already. 22 wheat cents. Roll 25 and wheat scent number 23 is going to be another shiny one. And is that a 1945? It is. What a nice 1945. It does have a little environmental damage there, but I don't care. It is still a beauty in my opinion. And, uh, we don't find them in the 40s like this too often. Wow. Roll 26, and I'm not showing all the shinies until the end, but I had to show this one. Man, that's a stunner. A 1964 Philadelphia. Beautiful. Roll 27. Wheat scent number 24. And it's a 1920 Philly, I believe. It is. And not in absolutely terrible shape. Common. But another 20s Wheatie in the box, which makes three. Oh, and that's the oldest. Roll 30 and wheat scent number 25 is going to be another beautiful 1956 Denver. Holy cow. I'll put that under the scope and check for the shadow deep. Otherwise, I'll be back with another find. Same roll, wheat scent 26, a 1949S. Roll 31 looks like it's going to have at least one wheat scent and possibly two. Here's the first one, a 1944 Denver, I believe. So we'll check it for the D over S over mint mark, which it is not. And then I believe this one looks pretty old back here. And it's another 41 Philly. So that's 28 wheat cents right now in our 31st roll. 
Roll 32, wheat set number 29. A 1935 Denver. Roll 33. Wheat scent number 30 is a 1939 Philly. Roll 35. Wheat scent 31. Another beauty. Maybe clean though. 52D and definitely cleaned. Same roll, wheat scent number 32 is going to be another 34 Philadelphia. Roll 36, wheat scent 33, a 1953 Philly. Roll 37, wheat scent 34. 1934 Philly again. Same roll and yet another beautiful uncirculated weedy. 58 Denver. Wheat scent 35. Roll 39 and wheat scent 36 is another stunner. And that one is a 1954 with a little bit of toning and discoloration. But we will take it. And I think I see another oldie back here for number 37. Another 1939 Philly. Roll 40. Wheat scent. 38. 51D. Well, I just dumped out roll 41 and it separated right out of wheat scent. So I figured I'd grab it and show you what wheat scent number 39 looks like. I think it's 39. Could be 40. I'll double check here in a second. But 53 Denver. Roll 42 and wheat scent number 40 has been found. It's another 1934P and one of the edges I saw looked a little bit old. Man, that had my heart going for a second. I thought it said 1914D for just a second, but I think it is an 18S and it is. I'll take an 18S wheat set all day, but for one split second at that angle, I thought it was 14D, and I almost had a heart attack. By the way, oldest of the box and 41 of the hunt. Make it 42 because a few coins behind that one is a beautiful 1950 Denver. Wow. Roll 43, wheat scent number 43, 1935 Philly. Roll 45 is going to have two wheat scents. First one, another 1939 Philly. And number 45 of the hunt, another 1934 Philly. Roll 46, and of course, Wheat scent 46. 1938 Philly. Staying on pace. Roll 47. Wheat scent. 47 is a 55 Denver. Roll 50. Wheat scent 48, I think. I could be wrong. This is a 36P. First one we found of that year. So I do want to double check the date for any doubling. There's a nice 36 DDO. But that's not going to be it, I don't think. The one looks very suspicious. Hold on one second. Man, I don't see the rest of the doubling I want, but that one looked a little bit like it's doubled. The one's throwing me off because it does look like there's a notch right here. It does look like there's something going on there, but I don't know if it's too worn to see the rest of any doubling, but I don't see it. It's pretty heavily doubled on the inside of this six, the top of the three, and on the nine, and I don't see it anywhere else. I'm going to say no, but I'm going to look at it off camera a little bit longer, only because of the one. It could just be some dings, but it does look suspicious. I'll be back if it pans out to be anything. Otherwise... I'll bring you back either for a wrap-up or another find. 
The 36 was not a DDO, but I figured I'd bring you in on the last find of the box, I believe, and it's going to be a King George 1942. King George the Sixth Canadian cent. Unbelievable. Wow, what a box. Let me organize the finds, and I'll bring you back in. All right, we've hunted that box. 48 wheat cents in total, and you got to wonder, had USPS not lost the other five rolls, what would we end up with? But 48 is a great number. I ran out of room in my copper cup, so I had to get a backup copper dish. That's all the zincs, and honestly, it's probably probably 33 to 40% copper in between those two jars there and what's in there. As far as Canadians, 12 Canadians. I believe we got three young heads. Yeah, three young heads and a King George VI. We got a total of 11 1959s. I haven't checked any of the Denver ones for the RPM. I will do that off camera. We got a ton of uncirculated scents. I'll just show them really quick to you guys. 59, 60, 61s, 64s, 68S, of course the 69S, and then a handful of ones from the 70s, which definitely I will take because they are beautiful. I also kept 174S. I found six in the box, but the other ones were terrible, and this one is a beauty, so I will definitely take that up. It's not going to be red. It's more brown, but the strike is beautiful, and uh, it's a keeper. Look at the number of 69S's in the box. 16. That's more than I usually find in any box, even one from California. That's crazy. Of course, none were the DDO. I've got the circulated 50s over here, the circulated 40s over here, and then for the fines of the box, we got a 1918S, a 1920P, a 24S, a 29S. We got five 1934s, all Philly, a 35 Philly and a 35 Denver, a 36 Philly, not the DDO, a 38 Philly, and then quite a few 39 Phillies for there. The bright and shinies. A 1945 Philly. A 50 Denver. A 54S. A 54P. A 5060. Matter of fact, we got four of those. And then four 58Ds. Up close, they're not as mint state as you'd like, but they're definitely MS 60 to 63 in my opinion, and maybe some are slightly higher. No graders in here, but definitely up graders, if you will. I wanna thank Jim for sending me this box, and I still have a bank wrapped box to hunt, albeit a few rolls short as well. Jim, you wrote in your note that you found quite a few uncirculated beauties. I hope you got some uncirculated wheat scents in your rolls like I did mine. Man, what a trade. I appreciate you sending this to me even though you knew the rolls you got were just as good if not better or at least close to being as good. But man, what a hunt. These are the kind of boxes I enjoy. I will tell you on final thoughts, with as many 1992Ds as I saw, I was praying we'd find a close AM we didn't. And it's odd. It seems like all the 84s were D, no Ps. All the 83s were Ds, hardly any Ps. And the 98, 99, 2000s all seem to be Denver as well. So I don't know if this person did a lot of traveling. There's a lot of S mints in here. There was a lot of Ds. And it seemed like in certain years, there was some Philadelphias mostly as well. Very odd. Anyway, what a hunt. I know I keep saying that, but I'm on my high right now because it was such a fun box to hunt. It took me several hours, but it was well worth it and I'd love to do it again. Hopefully you enjoyed this customer rolls penny box, likely turned in because of the coin shortage, and I'll take it. And Jim, thank you as well. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting, and thanks for watching.